So let's do another proof of we using the rules of identity. So here we have a premise that says if A is identical to A, then C is identical to D. So A and C are, and D are individual constants standing for who knows what. If D is identical, and then D is identical to E, that's given. We want to derive C is identical to E. Uh, what would you do first, Mark? Well, we're definitely going to be using some identity rules because we're going to rip deep in identity symbols here. This first thing looks potentially odd at first. A is A. It seems pretty obvious, and indeed it is. That's a small case A, small by the case, way. Yeah. Uh, what we can do, if I can get that all by itself down here, uh -huh. I could do a modus ponens on line one, uh -huh. and then maybe I'd be able to work identity with some of these other identity symbols. Uh -huh. We do have a way of doing that. We have a rule self-identity where you're allowed to write universal X, X is identical to X. Once you write that down, then once we see it, maybe it'll the okay. point will be, become clear. Okay, so universal x for any x, x is identical to itself. The Which principle is, of self-identity. Yeah. It's hard to argue with that one. Yeah, this is just saying something is whatever. Whatever is going to be identical to itself. Whatever Every, it is is what it is. Everything's identical to itself. Okay. Aristotle thought that that was a fundamental principle of reasoning. Well, if that's going to be true of everything, it'll be true of Albert. That is, it'll be true of little a's. Mm -hmm. So from this, I can do a ui, mm -hmm. moving this universal quantifier and replacing the x's with a's. So I get a is identical to a. Okay, so I strip away the universal quantifier, replace the variable that it binds with a constant of my choice, in this case a. Mm -hmm. So a is, a is identical to itself. That'll be ui3. Okay. 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 And now I can do the modus ponens with 1 and 4, because A is identical to A, and if that's the case, then I should be able to say C is identical to C, or to D. Okay. Let's do a modus ponens to get C is identical to D. C is identical to D, modus ponens 1 four. and 4. Okay. Okay, and now what I'm focusing my attention on are these last two lines that I haven't even used yet. What this tells me up here is that anywhere I see a D, I can replace it with an E, or vice versa. Anywhere I see an E, I can replace it with a D. That's Leibniz's law. Leibniz's law. Uh, so what I can do is I'm going to use this on this D. I'm going to replace this D with an E. Okay. This allows me to flip these, take these guys up and exchange them. Okay. So line six would be C is identical to E. So we just this, this stayed the same, that stayed the same. I just pulled the D out and replaced it with an E. This line here let me do that. And Leibniz's law allows you to do it because of this premise that tells you that D is identical with E. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that would be LL25. And that's our conclusion. Very good. Okay.